What up fam? Today we're gonna learn how to make this simple leather axe mask. Stay tuned. So in last week's long episode, I showed you how to take a regular old Walmart hatchet and turn it into this super dope Viking axe. This bad boy is shaving sharp and beautiful, but that means I need to protect myself from the blade and the blade from the elements. A good way to do this is with a simple axe mask. I'm gonna be using this piece of scrap leather I have from other projects. It's kinda of dinged up and nasty looking, but I don't mind this thing looking a little rugged and I hate to waste leather. So I start by laying the hatchet down on some paper and tracing out the front portion that I wanna be covered. Using that tracing as my guide, I start drawing in what I want the sheath to look like. At the bottom and the front of the ax, I'm gonna maintain a distance of an additional 3 eighths. This is gonna be used for our welt so that there's enough space between our two pieces of leather for the ax head to actually fit into. As you can see by the layout, stitching is gonna go along the bottom and the blade, while the top will stay open, allowing easy access to the ax. With that whole design established, I go ahead and cut the pattern out. I trace that pattern onto my leather in one direction and then flip it over so I have it going in the other direction as well. I'm also gonna need my welt in leather too, so I cut that out of the pattern and lay it down on the leather as well. Then I carefully cut everything out with a sharp knife. So the general idea is to place the welt onto the leather like so, sandwiching it between the two plates to leave a gap between them. Now we're gonna wanna glue this before we sew it. So I lay the welt down onto the leather and trace it out so I know where the glue needs to be applied. Then I carefully apply some barge cement to the marked out areas as well as to both sides of my welt. Oh, quick note before you glue up that welt though. Leather has a rough side and a smooth side. You wanna go ahead and rough up that smooth side so that the glue has more to hold on to. After letting the barge cement sit for about 15 minutes, I was able to stick everything together. Be careful with this process because once that cement touches each other, it is stuck there for good. I then took a bit of sandpaper to the edges just to make sure everything met as flush as possible. From here on out, you might wanna stick a piece of scrap leather just in between them so that the sides don't cave in on themselves and get all wonky while you're trying to make your stitch holes. Speaking of stitch holes, I used a groover tool just to line up where those stitch holes will go. Then I used a four prong punch to mark along that line to make sure I get my spacing correct. So because the addition of the welt makes everything so thick, I'm gonna be using my drill press to lay down those holes. For this, I'm using a 16th of an inch drill bit. Though I honestly probably could have gone up by a 16th of an inch, as this size hole made it a little bit hard to push the needle through. Before moving on to the next step, I'm taking this time to treat my edges with a slicker brush, making sure my edges are round and smooth and sexy. Now I've decided to use this Mjolnir shaped concho as part of my closure assembly. A concho is kind of like a pin, but with a little screw in the back that holds it in place. So I punch a hole in the center of my front plate large enough for the screw to come through. For the rest of my closure assembly, I marked out these four lines on the back plate, each of them about a half of an inch long. Then I carefully cut along those lines with a sharp razor. By pushing them from the inside, I'm kind of able to make this little mound come out. I make a hole into that little mound with an X-Acto knife, and then I widen that hole out with an awl. Just make sure you push enough of the leather out so you can get a good bit of meat. You don't want this area to be weak at all. You'll see how this works in just a minute, but first I wanted to dye everything to make sure I get all those holes in whatever leather is showing through those mounds we pushed through. I'm also gonna take this time while everything's out of the way to stitch all along our seam line. For this, I'm gonna be using a basic saddle stitch as it's really strong and it looks really good. All right, with that all in place, it's time to put in our closure assembly. I start by pushing my concho screw from the inside into position. Then I screw my little Thor's hammer tightly into place. Next, I pass this leather cordage through those holes we made in the back. These holes are gonna help keep this cord into position and make sure that it never gets lost. I take the bite of that cord and loop it around to the front, hooking it onto the concho. Then I take the loose ends and tie them just into a little barrel knot. Now once the hatch is in place, all I have to do is pull that knotted end around the bottom, securing the mask to the ax. And there you have it, one rustic Norse-inspired sheath to go along with one rustic Norse-inspired axe. I hope you enjoyed this fun and easy project, and as always, keep leveling up, you.